good morning, evening, or afternoon, whichever one's going on for you at this current point in time today. Just got the arrester in the mail. Now this is a water hammer arrester. Really quick, if you're unfamiliar with what water hammer is, it's essentially a shock wave or a noise that your plumbing makes when there is an abrupt stop to water and there's no space for that pressure to equalize. So typically there's two ways for you to actually implement that arrester and that is to either solder or connect a water arrester somewhere in line, probably in your basement, somewhere close to your plumbing, or you can have the arrester put somewhere near your sink or in this case specifically made around the toilet. Hence why there is a 7 eighths ball cock on the top part and the other side is for the connection to your plumbing. So we're going to get this in. Everything's already wiped up, cleaned up. So it is a tight spot because I do have a bidet, but we're going to see how this goes on and see how everything connects up. And I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to do three instances where I flush the toilet because there's two kinds of water hammer sounds. Either while you're using the water, you can hear like a like a sputtering or like a, a machine gun kind of booming behind your wall or a normal flow. And then when you close the sink or shut off the shower, or in this case, the toilet stops refilling, it's going to make a sudden boom. It's going to make one solid sound. Now that might not be a big deal for you and you might ignore it. Maybe you got the fan running. Maybe you got your ventilation fan in the bathroom, whatever. Through time, it's going to start loosening up connections. So we're going to get that in. Please protect your plumbing and make sure there's water arresters if that noise happens to come up. Also, if your plumbing is not properly secured in the walls, it can also lead to that shockwave because your plumbing is moving. So there's more area for the shockwave to pass through kind of boom. And also, last thing before I get this in is if you have pecs, don't think it's quieter because it's flexible and it's plastic. No, I have pecs. It still makes noise. So we're going to hopefully get this situated with the water arrestor straight to the toilet. Let's do it. Okay, squeezing by the bidet, tight spot, tight spot. I'm gonna turn off the angle stop, making sure there's no supply to the toilet. Make sure it's completely flushed. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what a water arrestor is, it's essentially a small piston that compresses the air behind the piston in order to absorb that shock of that pressure. You should be having some air in your system, again, not to the point where you're coughing out air, but certain spots where the water pressure can equalize with air. If there's too much water in the system and nowhere for the air to escape, it's just gonna make a big thump or a big shock wave through your plumbing. Off of first impressions, there is no rubber gasket here, nor is there any in here. So I'm gonna assume that this is probably gonna need some PTFE or some thread sealant because I'm feeling like this is gonna leak just me threading this down. Even with a wrench, I doubt this is gonna be watertight. But I'm gonna do it exactly the way they say. They say 10 minutes. So Sioux Su Chief, Sio Chief, however you say that, we're gonna do it your way first because a lot of people are saying that there's still leaks. So I wanna see if it's a bad product or maybe just a bad design. Make sure you're completely empty, empty, empty. Now you're gonna want a bucket, a cup, a pail, a towel, something, because when you take off that ball cock that connects to your toilet, whatever water is residually at the bottom of your tank is going to come right out. So avoid damaging your drywall, keep something under it. Alrighty, give it a little bit of a right turn. So the reverse thread and expect some water to come down. Have your towel or your bucket ready. Okay, that's what that's for. Now the 7 eighths connection is gonna go to your toilet. Since it has a rubber seal, I'm not gonna put any PTFE or any pipe thread sealant unless I see leaks. So we're doing it the way the manufacturer wants it. They didn't include any PTFE or anything, so apparently it's not supposed to need it. We shall see. And if you saw how it turned, you may need to take off the cap and hold your refill valve in place so it doesn't spin while you thread this on. For your reference, that's the refill valve. So we hold this in place so that the threads, sorry if that's disorienting, but those threads have that seal at the bottom. You don't want this thing spinning. 
next. All right, now we just reconnect the supply. The reason it's so complicated is because I have a splitter that goes to my bidet and then the other half goes up to feed the toilet. So yours, if you don't have a bidet, it'll just be a straight line from your fill straight to the toilet. Now I'm doing this with one hand, but I'm gonna pause it for a second. You wanna make sure this is not spinning. So you're gonna hold this in place while this is threaded down. All right, she's all hooked up. Very slowly release and check for leaks. Oh, exactly what I thought. The leak is coming right at the connection point because there's no PTFE, there's no seal, there's nothing. So this requires a little bit of hands-on. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you see, I can, I can even just pull this off without even, yeah. So we're gonna use a little bit of PTFE. You know already Rock the Monster, that's what I use. You're gonna take your PTFE and you're gonna wrap your tape in the direction that the threads go. So if you turn it to the right to thread, then that's the way the wrapping needs to go. If you do it the opposite way, it's going to, it's going to unwrap itself as you thread it down. Um, and it's always ideal to leave that first thread off just so it can grab itself properly. And then you can give a little bit of a smoothing. That's what I like to do. Just give a little once over with the, with the threads by hand. Anything else is going to tear itself as you start threading it down. But the main thing is a good seal. Get you a little bit of the good stuff. This is pipe thread sealant. Again, you don't want to goop and glop this on. I mean, just, just enough. Just enough. Right? Make sure none of it actually gets in the hole. You want just the threads. Now we're going to squeeze back in here and make our connection. Make sure the threads line up as straight as they can. And before you go pressurizing this, you want to make sure that you're 100% allowing that pipe thread sealant to kind of cure a little bit. So take your time, do it nice and slow. Okie dokie. So we have our pipe thread sealant and PTFE now on as far as the connection here. Extra tight just in case. And our connection to the bidet is solid. Take two. Now that's at full pressure. Now while it's refilling, you wanna check for any signs of leaks at the toilet to adapter connection. You wanna check at the 7 8 connection. You wanna check at the lower connection. You wanna check the side threads. And as time goes by, that pipe thread sealant is just gonna get harder and make a better seal. So we're good. And let's listen. I'm gonna put the microphone next to the wall and we'll listen for that bump. See if it's gone. Fingers crossed. Okay, upon further investigation with a number eight hex, taking off this head showed that the crappy pipe thread sealant that comes from the factory caused the seven eighths ball cock to leak as well. This was not well done, and it looks like uh, it's done by hand, of course, so nice, nice quality control there. Unfortunately, I didn't like this product. I really wanted to. Right there, it says 10 minute install, nothing special, no crazy instructions. It just says attached to your toilet, and it should fix the issue. Unfortunately, it didn't, so that's getting a return, but if you happen to be on Amazon, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Maybe you check it out. Maybe you know what to avoid. That's on you. Free will, right? Thank you so much for watching. And if you need something to fix your water hammering situation, talk to a plumber near you so they can get you a proper water hammer arrestor. That's all I'm going to say about that. None of these gimmicks, little $5, $10 fixes, $20, $30, $50 fixes. No. Sometimes you spend more, you get more. Until next time, work smart.